Hey, how's it going everyone? Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use calculated columns in a SharePoint list. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, SharePoint Teams, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out a lot of videos in those areas. So let's get into the video. You are curious about calculate columns in a SharePoint list. So calculate columns are pretty useful if you want to kind of do some quick calculations on your data or you just want to clean up a little bit. I will actually link the documentation in the uh, description so you can see all the calculated columns. There's a lot of mathematical ones, so I'm just scrolling down. There's a lot of math ones um, with like calculus and stuff. I don't know if you guys need that. Most of the time, I just use it to concatenate strings, some if statements, and just to maybe um, change some text around. So I'm just going to be doing some examples about that of the most uses I use. And if you guys want to feel free to dive in even deeper for these functions, feel free. All right, so the first function is just going to be concatenating the first and last name here. So I just want to put it in one column. So let's go ahead and do that. So in the top right hand corner, you want to go ahead and click on list settings. All right, this will bring you to the list settings. And if you scroll all the way down, you can see create column at the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and create a column. So I will call this column first name, first and last name. I like to I like to put my columns with like no spaces or I'll do an underscore. That's just because I work in Power Apps, Power Automate. It's a lot easier doing it. You don't have to really correct the syntax, you just enter in the name. And also if you have spaces, you can't use the, I'm pretty sure you can't do the OData filter queries on your Power Automate action so that's why i usually keep column names with no spaces all right so this type of information this column this is going to be a calculate column and that's going to refresh the page just to give you the calculate options you can set a description if you want but here is the formula bar let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger and on the right hand side you have all the columns that you can work with so it's all the columns in my list so to start the formula to concatenate these strings, it will be equals. So you always want to do an equals and then we'll just write out concatenate. Uh, it's a little hard to spell. So if you're getting a syntax error and don't know why it could be your spelling, I've done that multiple times. So we've concatenate right now. And the first name for my SharePoint list is actually the title field. So we'll go ahead and click on title. So if you double click it, it will automatically populate. And then for the syntax of the concatenate function, it is the string, comma, string, comma, string. So in this case, I want to do comma, and then I want to do a space in between the first and last name. And then I want to do the last name, which is this. And we want to close up that formula with a parenthesis. So this data type returned from the formula is single line of text. That's correct because I want it to be a text. And we want to add it to the default view. So let's go ahead and press OK. Go back to our employee data. And if we look, we can see if it actually added that. So if we scroll all the way down, you can see we now have a calculate column for the first and last name. And that is these two columns concatenate together to form one string. So this one down below, Mike. His data was entered in with lowercase. I don't want that. I want it to be uppercase. Let's go back into that concatenate function and see if we can change the letters to uppercase. I'm going to go back in the first and last name. We still have the concatenate function. I'm going to add a proper function right outside that concatenate function. So it's going to capitalize the first letter in each word. So I have two words, first and last name. So it should capitalize each of those. And it's taken in the input of the concatenate. So that string is going to be uh, within the function proper. Let's scroll down and press OK. Let's go back. Scroll down. And it looks like it didn't work. So let's go ahead and check out the formula. So proper. So the issue with that formula, I wasn't too sure. I think it was. So when I first did it, it didn't capitalize those. But when I put it back in and re-ran it, it worked. So maybe it just didn't get loaded or maybe a space was off. 
maybe add a space in between that but pressed okay and it works fine now so i was able to capitalize mike and local so his name is now capitalized and that string is concatenated so let's go ahead and do an if statement so let's go and do uh if salary is over we'll do if salary is over let's see let's see uh if it's over fifty five thousand, we'll just say uh over budget if not under budget so let's go back in list settings great column and this will be over under budget let's say the company's going through tough times and we got to lay off a few people let's do calculated let's go ahead and do the formula so it would be an equal sign to start if and then we want to do so if salary is greater than or equal to 55,000 we want to output the string over budget so put that in double quotes and then if it's false we want to do under budget so with the if statement if this condition is true the first the first first string after your comma is going to be outputted if not the second string is going to be output because this is the true and this is the false let's go ahead and this is a single line of text so let's go ahead and press ok and we have one two three four just four people over budget so let's go ahead and navigate down and it looks like that wasn't added to the default view so if you click on add columns show or hide columns we can scroll down and we can see that field press ok now we can see we have these four people that are over budget and we have the three under 55,000 under budget. So that's an if statement. And let me just scroll through this list. I think the last one I'm going to do is just adding dates. So let's say I want to do, I want 30 days plus the start date. So let's say I have to give a review for this employee 30 days after they have been working. So I'll go back to the cogwheel list settings. Let's go to create column. And we'll just do 30 days past. And I want this to be a calculate field. And this will just be equals start date plus 30. So that's a date and that's a just a numerical value. So it's going to add 30 days to the start date. And this will actually be a date and time field. I'm just going to do the date because I don't care about the time. I have it add to default view, so we'll see if it adds it to the default view. I don't think it did in the last one. So we pressed OK, employee data. So let's scroll down. And yeah, it doesn't look, maybe it's being cached because I pressed the backspace. But now it works. So yeah, it's probably being cached. You just have to press reload on your screen. So. The start date for Ali is 8-2 and 30 days past is 9-1. So that formula works. It's helpful for adding on days. And pretty much when I just use calculated fields, it's either just to concatenate strings, uh, do a comparison with if statements, or to add numbers. So if you guys have any other common cases that you want to leave in the comments, go ahead and feel free. Or if you have any interesting ideas. The trim function is also nice if that's just like a data the data is entered in not really correctly it just removes like all the start spaces and all the end spaces after your string so all the text is all the text is fixed pretty much so that, just be aware of that so if you have any cool ideas for calculate fields uh feel free to leave them in the comments if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments if you like the video feel free to like comment and subscribe and i will catch you in the next video